Music is my life and my death, because I'm going to die singing. This is the remarkable story of Sergio De Carlo, the last living boleroist, a man who was born in Havana, Cuba in 1911 and grew up to influence music in America, Cuba, Mexico, and the world. A movie star, an impresario, a musician, and a composer of more than 300 rumbas and boleros, Mr. DiCarlo has left an unforgettable impression on the world. This is his story. Sergio makes his way to Depression-era New York City. When I saw New York, I fell in love with it deeply. I felt very important. I felt like I was in another world. And I felt that I could be a star someday that I wanted to be then. I was 19 years old. He is forced to find a job in, of all places, a button factory. With survival his only option, Sergio perseveres and miraculously is offered his first big break. One of the boys that worked in the bottom factory was a dancer in a chop suey restaurant. And I went for an audition and got the job. Sergio is befriended by a vaudeville team and is asked to sing and dance for their show in between costume changes. I got a bigger hand than they got. I stopped the show. From there on, I began to write all the material for the trio. After being spotted by a prominent production team, Sergio's first composition in New York, The Last of the Rumbas, becomes an instant hit and is performed live by band leader Andre Kostelanitz and is then recorded by Xavier Cugat. Irving Berlin is introduced to Sergio and is fascinated by his knowledge of Afro-Cuban rhythms. Mr. Berlin goes on to publish one of Sergio's earliest compositions, Bagu, a song about island life in Cuba. In 1934, Sergio begins a tour of Mexico where he is warmly received and becomes a recognizable figure to both stars and producers alike. He begins to build a reputation as the classic Latin lover. The main one inspiration that I have is women. All of me, I marry nine of them. And I have another 900 that I didn't marry. My memories are worth millions of dollars. A producer asks Sergio to write several songs for a new movie. The most memorable song from the film, the beautiful and romantic bolero, Flores Negras, is met with instant success and propels Sergio to stardom throughout Mexico. Flores Negras played all over Mexico. And you could put the radio any day, 24 hours a day, and Flores Negras was doing that six, seven, and eight times. That was the, the beginning of Flores Negras. Flores Negras goes on to become an international hit, eventually being recorded by Bing Crosby, Lawrence Welk, Pedro Vargas, Edie Gourmet, and most recently, Anna Gabrielle, among others. As a result of the success of Flores Negras, Sergio's reputation as a charismatic entertainer continues to soar. I had three very good points when I was young. I was rich. I was good looking and I was famous. He is asked to star in one of Mexico's first feature films, The Ghost of Midnight. In 1938, Sergio signs his first major deal with RCA Victor and composes the overnight sensation Paran Pan Pan, which is recorded by Xavier Cugat. Because of his prolific songwriting ability and his on-screen charisma, Sergio was considered by many to be a star in the making. Dark velvet night, too gloomy for the moonbeams to glow, too dismal for the heavens to show, not an angel in flight. Dark velvet night, so deep I feel the sky as it throbs, so still I hear my heart as it sighs, shadows low running by. 
During the early 1940s, the lure of New York calls to Sergio again. He plays opposite Carmen Miranda at the Versailles Club in Manhattan, appears with Xavier Cugat at the Waldorf Astoria, and co-stars in the Michael Todd production of the Cole Porter musical, Mexican Hayride, which runs for four years on Broadway at the Winter Garden Theater. In 1940, Sergio appears in the Rogers and Hart production of Too Many Girls, replacing the Hollywood-bound Desi Arnaz as a Cuban heartthrob. In 1942, Sergio writes a song for President Franklin D. Roosevelt. Franklin D. Roosevelt was doing a tremendous job as a president, and I had an idea to write a song called Mr. Franklin D. Mr. Franklin D. earned you great democracy. La -ra -ra la -ra 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 -ra. A government official who hears the song invites Sergio to the White House to perform his composition for the president. The president is elated and awards Sergio the honorary title of Ambassador of Melody from Latin America. Sergio performs regularly for the USO and tours Hawaii with the King Sisters, Edgar Bergen and Martha Ray on behalf of the war effort. As his career flourishes in New York City, Sergio is seduced into going to Hollywood to audition for the lead in the life of Rudolph Valentino. Sergio receives notoriety from Hollywood for his striking resemblance to the screen legend, as well as praise from the entertainment community, most notably from Louis B. Mayer. Sergio is subsequently offered a role in an Alan Ladd film for Paramount Pictures titled Captain Carey USA. Sergio plays an Italian minstrel who introduces the lovely romantic ballad Mona Lisa to the world. Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa. This famous song wins the Academy Award for Best Song of 1950 and is later recorded by Nat King Cole. In 1950, Sergio returns to Mexico City, where his songwriting abilities and nightclub appearances have rendered him the toast of the town. While attending a show at a local nightclub, he encounters, as he describes it, an angel singing opera, the lovely 18-year-old Gracie Lopez. Sergio has unexpectedly met the woman who would become the greatest passion of his life. Sergio and Gracie fall madly in love and are married within four months. In 1952, they tour Mexico and Latin America together for some time before deciding to give up fame and fortune and move to Los Angeles, California to raise a family. My wife was an opera singer on top of the world when I met her, and so was I. And we both knocked off the, the, the fame and the money for the life of the children. At this point in his career, Sergio was considered by many to be a rising star. His decision to prematurely end what had become a promising and successful show business career would become the turning point of his life. After years of writing memorable love songs that touched the hearts of lovers around the world, the maestro of the Cuban bolero, who had searched for his one true love and finally found her, lost her. My wife died and I was alone. And uh, I lost interest when she died because uh, uh, everything that I had left me, and I was alone. In a tragic and ironic twist, the devastating loss of his beloved Gracie had been foreshadowed by Sergio's greatest legacy of all, his timeless and haunting ballad, Flores Negras, Black Flowers. Flores Negras, el destino. Nos aparta sin piedad, pero el día vendrá en que sea para mí no más, no más, no más, no más, no más. Today, the man who was named Artist of the Year in 1942 by Billboard magazine still tells his stories and sings his songs, entertaining his family and friends, and is proud of the musical legacy that he has created. I got the music in my heart, and I got the, 
a, 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 so, some kind of a, a bug that tells me I got to give, I got to give the public something. Romance, love, goodwill, that all my songs are about that. Sergio's songs will live forever in the hearts of music lovers everywhere. His ability to overcome incredible odds and his ultimate transformation from a young Cuban boy into an international star of stage and screen will help to inspire all of those who strive to make their own dreams come true. Mm.